Hello. Yes, we're here, doctor. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. The screen, is it clear? It's clear, doctor. You can see the slide now? Yes. Okay. So let us uh, say the Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and uh, good day for everyone. How many candidates? 36, Doctor. 36, okay. So because I'm presenting, I, I will ask you, uh, I will interrupt you many times to just answer some questions. So keep in contact, please. Okay. Uh, let us start by Umm uh, al One of the, of the important lessons to remember the Prophet وسلم, is to defend him from anyone trying to attack uh, Today you are going to speak about diarrhea in a child uh, Before starting my... Uh, uh, doctor. Yes. Um, sorry to interrupt, but there is someone cannot enter the meeting right now. Who Someone can cannot. Know? There's one person cannot uh, enter the Zoom. Uh, okay, let him contact Farah to see how she let him enter. Or he has an uh, internet problem. Hello? Is it there? You got any internet problem? Uh, yes, he has an uh, internet problem. I'll try to contact him. Okay, let him uh, send me a message. I will try to help him by sending him the lecture. But he can, I don't know, do his best and will help him, inshallah. Okay. Uh, the, the, the most important uh, advice for you uh, while you are starting your day. So you have more than 1,000 days. I need you to make a good use of that time. You will get a very good uh, clinical skills. And you as a doctor, the top importance is to go to any, and clinical skills to be a safe doctor and to be able to work your mind so your clinical skills can diagnose. Okay? So remember this advice from my side. Number one, for your clinical skills, please focus on the disease and in the patient field. Don't feel in, your, uh, in the disease alone, yes, you need to come to the diagnosis, but don't ignore the feeling of the other, especially the mother and father and the family. Sometimes they are more, more uh, distress if the baby is the disease, not them, okay? Uh, the interview and the history taking, it must be under warm and friendly, okay? situation okay no need for interruption if you are going to sit with the family you must have a good eye to eye contact you must listen carefully and observe and the empathy and the support you must have a flow a logic flow of the content it means number one you must introduce yourself Okay, and uh, try to ease the situation. 
uh, and then uh, your introduction for conversing you have different types you have different style sometimes you need to ask direct questions or open question or screening questions you need to cover uncover the hidden parts like the social situation uh, and take care at some point the patient or the family may feel guilt or bad feeling so try to be a soft toucher you are dealing with humankind with a lot of emotion now the mother or the father are very worried about his child and he's also worried about his work and there is another job and they are afraid and a lot of things if you please you must carry number one a heart which is uh, the looking of Allah for anyone he is looking at his heart your heart must be sympathize must be rahma as the Prophet was, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Anyone coming to you in this situation, he is sick or his kids are sick, he is in a weak situation. He needs someone to help him, whatever he is strong, okay? So please be sympathized. We are not dealing with machine, okay, or with ball. No, we are dealing with emotions. Uh, the other <coughs> advice, there is no excuse of the sequence of the history. Okay, you must know if you are starting the history after the complaint and the presenting and the systemic, you must go for prenatal, natal, postnatal, what about the feeding, growth and development, immunization, previous illness, uh, injury, family, social, sanguinity, all this. Okay, so it is very, very important to go for all this systematically and don't forget anyone because every one of this can guide you for a diagnosis. And you will see if you are carrying it perfectly, you can pick a lot of issues which can be missed. It's the same must be applied for your clinical examination. We will speak after that. You must know, you must not the no excuse for a good sick clinical examination also. Okay. Something which we speak that we need to be sympathized with the patient, but at the same time, <coughs> uh, don't qualify reassurance for the patient when you are trying to ease the anxiety. I mean, you must be sympathized, but at the same time, it may be the patient came in injury and you don't know how severe is it? The patient looks bad like that. So you mustn't tell, don't worry, everything will be okay. As a blanket assurance, it may be give them a false hope or false understanding. So you must be honest, okay, and be clear, but sympathize. Oh, it looks a severe injury, it may be a serious. We don't know, we are trying to stabilize him first and then because they will ask you, tell us. Tell us the diagnosis, tell us what is the issue. So try to be done, uh, give false reassurance. Be professional, okay, especially under an anxious time, uh, clear and frankly. Okay, the two thing to know the, the age and the gender and the name of your child. The child Amar is how many old like that? So it is, be it is best to speak to the family by the name. Uh, your dress also is very important. Your manner of speech, which is sympathized and polite and respectful, is very important. You must uh, go two important art in your medical life. The first one is the art of differential diagnosis. There is a nice book, our colleagues in intermedicine do it, the art of differential diagnosis. It will open your mind. We are not accepting this diagnosis. Even inside the diagnosis, we have a lot of points. This patient has EGE, but it is not enough. He has dehydration. It is not enough. Maybe EGE, this viral, rotaviral EGE, it may be bacteria, it may be photons poisoning, it may be dysentery, it may be bacterial enteritis. The dehydration can be mild, moderate, severe, 
So everything, you must be able to diagnose the disease and keep the differential diagnosis of it. Is it gastroenteritis or food poisoning or parenteral diarrhea can be a wide one. Okay, the, the, the second skills, how to break the news for the patient. From start, you are dealing with patient every time. We must know the, how to break and how to bring uh, beside every bad, every bad news, you give the patient to try to put something good. And remember, this is a very effective technique. Uh, you can put a patient, just for an example, he, he got acute ALL, which is acute lymphocytic leukemia, lymphoblastic leukemia. It's so simple to tell the patient, okay, your patient got this disease and let him cry and, uh, and nothing. But you may be more professional if you tell them, oh, so sorry, the bone marrow test came that it's, after you ask them what you know, what you are afraid of, they will afraid that my our child can go to leukemia. As we said, the result came. Unfortunately, the diagnosis is ALL. And they leave them to cry. Don't try to stop crying. Cry will ease the things. And over them a tissue. And then you tell them, I would like to tell you. Your other investigations are assuring now, so it is not so bad. And the diagnosis, if it is true, also, of course. And the diagnosis of ALL now is not so difficult. It is, it is better than COVID-19. The result now are very good. More than 90% of a childhood will get complete cure if you did your job and start your treatment early and restrict to the treatment and you are helping you by offering your own medication under the cover of consultant for that. So this is the issue of how to break the news because all our news looks like bad. Okay? Can you understand? Yes, doctor. Okay. Uh, your equipment, there is no excuse for that. Starting from hand drop, scope, gloves, tongue blade, whatever, the tape measure, the speculum, the blood pressure machine, uh, even the developmental assessment tools, you must have in your hand a sum of uh, toys and assessment tools so you can do it from now. Don't wait until the fifth year only to do that. So it is very, very important to be in your hand. Many situations, if you have a simple toy or simple noisy small things, it can distract the child and you can finish the exam. Okay, so I need every one of you put in his uh, bag all this, please. Okay, don't forget it. How to be professional? Here is some psychological advices. Your appearance, you are a doctor, you must make sure that your appearance is professional. You must speak by decent manner and deal by it. You must have kind attitude to the child, to the family. You must feel the responsibility. You are responsible to come to diagnosis and the treatment and make the child completely cured. You have a moral about the medical issue, about the dignity of the other about the confidentiality. You must be confidential. Don't speak for any patient about the other patient. You must be confident, but not over. You must wash your hand before touching any patient and between patient, because it's the, the right of the patient to be protected from infection control. Okay? Uh, don't be so hairy try to help the patient and speak with the child by friendly manner, please. The patient should be made as comfortable as possible, please. Okay? The patient also should be exposed, but proper exposure. You must have towel to cover the child, especially for adolescents. You are not allowed to remove his clothes and leave him. Also, you have a curtain. You must close the curtain and with nursing staff with you, so you can examine the child, okay? All this is simple, 
but if you did it, you will look like more professional, okay? It uh, doesn't mean if you feel you are confident, so you, you are breaching any of this, not allowed means. Here is also the important uh, advices about uh, uh, physical examination. You must start the right side of the patient, okay? Use your right hand, you must have sequential examination. Uh, proper uh, exposure, okay? You must speak and make report and speaking with the patient. Uh, you must show care to his disease and you must answer the question. Don't neglect any question coming to you, okay? Uh, usually you must check if there any asymmetry of the body because asymmetry in the body, in the X-ray, in the MRI, all this can be the starting point for you to big deviation from normal. It is important for you to be a good pediatrician to have a good observation. Okay, number one, if you come to the other, to any patient and to get his permission from the father, you are not getting permission from children unless they are adolescents. Usually we are getting permission from the mother or father and believe uh, the child and tell him I'm going to I'm going to examine you. No police can examine you again. Okay. Uh, does the patient look well or sick or does the patient dysmorphic or not? His nutrition is underweight, overweight, okay? Is alert or not, maybe in coma like that. Is comfortable or has a pain? To take care before touching any patient, you must ask him uh, he feel any pain or not. Does it second, okay? Uh, he's in distress or not. He looks acute on case or chronic case because chronic cases it need a lot of, of work. What about signs of dehydration like sunken eyes or other, okay? Does the patient appear clean or not? His hair is combed, it means uh, we can sometimes make the, the issue of child neglect or child abuse from the appearance, okay? So all these are information you must bring it, okay, easily by observation. And you will not be a good pediatrician until you are a good observer. You will not go, be a good doctor until you have a good ability for observation. Okay, you can get a lot of significant information. Okay, even like a child with severe dehydration, you will find anterior fentanyl. The patient has sunken eyes like that. It, you will pick it directly if you are coming to the patient. Okay, if the patient has cerebral palsy, you will find him he is not reactive. He is still wearing the bumper. He is rolling saliva. He has a tube. All this is just by observation. So please, observation will give you a good knowledge you mustn't underestimate. Okay, you need, you need to make sure that uh, the room is comfortable and the light is enough because sometimes if it is not good or dim, we can miss jaundice or like that, okay? Uh, look and observe before touching. All this is a very important part. If we are going to speak about uh, diarrhea and we will find the gastroenteritis or diarrhea is responsible for a big bulk of childhood death. Okay. So what is diarrhea? Diarrhea is an increase in the fluidity of the, of the stool, the volume and the frequency, okay? It is a changing in the fluidity, the volume and the frequency. It can be acute diarrhea up to two weeks. More than two weeks, we are going to diagnose chronic diarrhea. You can find that diarrhea can be either acute diarrhea Okay, which can be accompanied by dehydration or malnutrition. It can be dysentery. 
Presentry, usually it is affected in the mucosa and presented by mucus blood and the tenismus. It may be resistant to diarrhea, okay, accompanied also by dehydration and malnutrition. Resistant means just between the acute and the chronic. So we have here acute and then prolonged and resistant, which can be chronic one. Okay, of course, acute in the most common is the acute gastroenteritis or parenteral diarrhea. The chronic like inflammatory bowel disease, which is the most common one. So how can we classify diarrhea? Diarrhea can be infectious or non-infectious. Non-infectious, it will be malabsorption, it will be lactose intolerance, cow milk allergy. You must rule out this because most of that situation will be chronic diarrhea. Okay, the infection can be enteral or parenteral. Parenteral, this is a very important not to miss. For small children, parenteral diarrhea, it means the child has problem outside the intestine. So it is parenteral. Enteral means in the intestine itself, here parenteral. So most of the child, if they got otitis media or pneumonia or UTI or some systemic infection like dengue, they will get diarrhea and sometimes vomiting also. What is the name of this one? Is the parenteral diarrhea. So if you saw any patient with gastroenteritis, you must make sure that the air is free, the chest is free because sometimes lower basal pneumonia can be accompanied by vomiting and loose stool also if he is swallowing sputum. And also UTI, you must ask and you may need to do urine in some situation. Okay, am I clear? Hello? Yes, doctor. Okay, so can be non-infectious, which malabsorption and lactose intolerance and carbonic allergy and they can be parenteral. What is the enteral, which usually you are speaking about? It can be viral, which is the most common, like adeno, rota, entero, viral, or whatever, can be bacterial, and you must know the very common uh, organisms, okay? And it can be rare, uh, like intamoeba, hysteritica, gardia, lambilia, scaris, and like that. Of course, food poisoning is an important entity, which you must read in your reference book, at least a small article about the types of food poisoning and the when it will appear, the time of appearance, appearance after food feed. Is it in the first six hours or is it 12 hours or 48 hours and the presentation? Because uh, it is very important in a country like our country who has uh, used to eat outside to be worried about the food poisoning so that you must ask the family history if there any other family history experience diarrhea or after food like that so who can revise this slide for me one of you can present it quickly please this slide I will try, doctor. Okay. Uh, so diarrhea is divided into uh, of infectious cause and non-infection cause. So non-infection, it could be due to malabsorption, lactose intolerance, or cow's milk allergy. And then for infection, uh, we need to rule out what, whether it is parenteral or enteral. So parenteral is basically infection that is uh, not related to the GI. So for example, otitis media, pneumonia, and UTI. So when there's diarrhea, but the infection is uh, of not enteral infection, so we need to consider it as a parenteral diarrhea. And then we also have enteral di diarrhea, which could be caused by uh, virus, bacteria, and parasite. Thank you. So now we are going to apply what you spoke about. 
uh, if the patient has diarrhea, we are going to start by the history and physical examination, investigations, and the treatment. We would like to ask you questions. How is the benefit or how is the percentages of knowledge we can collect by history and physical and the investigation? History, BE, and the investigation. Okay, about 70% of the knowledge will be collected by the history taking. 70% of the diagnostic ability and the details will be killed by the history taking. About 20 or 25 will come from BE. And the investigation need to be guided and about 5%, okay? That's why history taking are very important. Your physical examination are the top important. It is not a matter of each patient come to us who are going to ask for unended investigation. No, you must be able to answer why you did this investigation, what is the benefit? Because it is costly for the patient or for the ministry, okay? So here is the history taking. Okay, what is the chief complaint? Onset and duration, frequency and volume, what is the nature? You must be able to differentiate between secretory and osmotic diarrhea. The secretory diarrhea, it will be persistent to his fasting. What is the most common disease which can cause secretory diarrhea? like cholera, okay, and the other in severe infection. Ismotic diarrhea will stop with fasting. Dysentery, it will contain blood, mucus, and pus. Steatorrhea, which is different than diarrhea, is passing a, a lot of stool, but it is pale and greasy. It may contain like fat globules, it's bulky and the poorly formed. So now, from our previous presentation, even the diarrhea itself, we can conclude, yes, is it acute or chronic? Yes. The second slide, it can will tell me, is it infectious or non-infectious? Number three, it will tell me about the pathophysiology, it is secretory, Zmotic, dysentery, steatorrhea. All these details, we can collect it now from the history books. Okay, for any motions, you must be able to, to put about the frequency, volume, consistency, color, odor, blood, mucus. Here is a Bristol spool chart. You must go through it and know how to ask the family practically to tell me the seven criteria and it's Bristol spool together. For any disease, you must ask yourself, is the disease uh, doing complication or not? Okay, so what is the most common complication for AGE is the dehydration. So you must ask about his thirst, irritability, lethargy, consciousness level. Urine output is very, very important. You must ask about how is the urine because the kidney cannot be fasting for a longer time. If the patient doesn't pass urine for considerable hours, it may be end by acute kidney injury, okay? Malnutrition is very important, especially if the baby lost weight or failure to thrive or specific symptoms. The other, uh, like dysentery, amoeba, electrolyte imbalance. So all these are complication of diarrhea and dehydration. So you must go through it during the 
counseling is a family. What about the past medical history? Who's given any medication like some antibiotics like amoxicillin, clavulin can cause diarrhea. It is not so severe, but it can happen if the patient has history of bowel operation. What about his diet? He changed his milk. He has some allergy to some foods. What about the family? Is there any similar presentation? So I may suspect either food poisoning or infectious diarrhea. Is there any history of chronic diarrhea like inflammatory bowel disease and cystic fibrosis or not? The last one is social. The social are very important. You are not allowed to miss the social situation at any, any, any patient. Okay, what about his daycare center or school? Is there any infection or epidemic there? What about the boards, uh, the water supply and uh, hygiene at, inside the home? It is very important. How is the income which can affect the situation? Then we are going for physical examination. Okay, of course, number one for any patient you are examining, you must comment is conscious or unconscious, is irritable or not irritable. It is basic, but sometimes you miss it. Is lethargic or not? Is pale or jaundice? Why pale or jaundice? Because it may indicate acute hemolytic crisis. Okay, is there any lymphadenopathy? Is there any signs of malnutrition? Is there any signs of anemia? Uh, anthropometry are very important. What is the most important one here? For this anthropometry, we sorry, uh, the, the weight, yeah, but because we are dividing the severity of dehydration guided by the loss of weight, so it is very important to concentrate on that. What is the last registered weight, and we are trying to see how much is the loss. During physical, uh, physical examination, we must assess the uh, dehydration status uh, as we speak after that, and the abdominal examination. Uh, peristaltic movement are very important. So you must, you must auscultate the abdomen. Many of you are underestimating the auscultation of the abdomen for peristalsis. Who can answer how many peristalsis the restaltic movement we have per minute. Who can answer? You must open and read, okay? I will not inform you, you must read it yourself and answer me, please. Scar are very important to you. If you have any scar in your clinical examination for any patient, please go ahead and comment on the scar. How long is it? Measure it by your meter. And you must tell us, is it old or new? Is it complicated or not complicated? And what may be behind that scar? Is it splenectomy? Is it uh, sepulation? Is it appendicectomy? Whatever, you must know the place of any scar. The, as we speak about the uh, bowel sounds, okay, uh, rectal examination, if there is a perineal area in many child, if, if it has like lactose intolerance or chronic one or infection, it is very important especially if you suspect blood with the stool. So blood with the stool is very important to go through this area. It may be excretion of the, of the skin, which is offering the blood, or sometimes it is like anal fissure, which can be behind. So it is very important to uh, perineal area to be examined. This is the hydration status. Who can present this important table? Another one.
another candidate need to present or should I choose? I think I would have tried that. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so the hydration status is quite important, uh, especially in uh, pediatric expression. So here the parameters here. So uh, here we have the percentage less than 3%, uh, 5 to 10% and more than 10%. So it indicates uh, weight loss, the percentage of weight loss uh, from the patient. So here the first parameter, which is no, uh, which is uh, no, uh, not a clinical dehydration, which is that which indicates a body uh, loss of weight loss, uh, which is three percent. So and then the sum, which is also known as a uh, clinical dehydration, which indicates there is a uh, five to ten percent uh, weight loss, and then there is severe, which is more than ten percent which also indicates that the patient is suffering from shock. Okay, so we'll go through by one, uh, one by one. For the general appearance, for the not, not the apparent dehydration, uh, which is uh, not the clinical uh, dehydration, which is normal, uh, the patient might appear alert and well. For the clinical dehydration, which is uh, five to 10% uh, weight loss, uh, that is less restless and lethargic. And next, the patient which is suffering from shock, more than 10% weight loss, uh, patient might have, fix. the patient might have, um, uh, I can't see the slides, doctor. Hello? Yeah, um, we'll continue. Uh, so, so the general, well, when there is not much, uh, not, not much dehydration, not apparent dehydration, so when uh, observation at the anterior fontanelle, which is less than 3% weight loss, uh, weight loss, that is normal, there is no sunken anterior fontanelle. So when there is clinical dehydration, the anterior fontanelle might appear sunken, and when there is a uh, severe dehydration, the anterior fontanelle will appear very sunken. So look at the uh, patient's eyes. Uh, not apparent dehydration will uh, appear normal. The eyes are normal. Whereas uh, clinical dehydration will show the eyes are sunken. And in uh, shock, there is a closely sunken eyes. The patient might present with uh, tears when there is not much dehydration. And if there is a clinical dehydration, there will be reduced tears. And if the patient uh, appear with shock, there might be an absence of tears. So uh, the patient might complain uh, there is no thirst if there is less uh, reduced of uh, uh, when there is uh, not much dehydration. And if uh, there is clinical dehydration, the patient might complain with uh, thirstiness. And if there is severe dehydration, well, there will be refused to feed. Also, the mucous membrane of the patient might also appear moist if there is, not, there is no dehydration. Uh, dry when there is uh, clinical dehydration and very dry when there is severe dehydration. Uh, the pulse Pulse, uh, pulse, the pulse will might be appear. The peripheral pulse will be might appear in uh, less than three percent uh, weight loss, and there is rapid or good volume 
of the pulse when there is a clinical dehydration but when there is severe dehydration there will be a rapid and weak pulse so when checking the respiratory system there will be normal it is normal when there is not much uh, dehydration no dehydration uh, rapid when there is a uh, clinical dehydration and there is small breathing uh, which is severely breed, uh, severe tachypnea which is also present in diabetic, diabetic ketoacidosis also uh, in severe shock a uh, severe dehydration okay for the blood pressure uh, this is normal in uh, not dehydrated uh, not dehydrated patient and there is slight decrease of the bp in clinical dehydration and there is oh and there is actually there will be a uh, hypotension in uh, the uh, present in the patient if there is a uh, severe uh, dehydration due to decompensated shock and then we have oh, i'm not really sure what is uh, crt normal in no dehydration some uh, there is normal to prolong, prolong and unrecordable in uh, severe and there is skin turgidity the skin turgidity of the patient uh, might be normal in uh, less dehydrated patient slightly reduced in clinical dehydration and reduced turgidity in severe dehydration oh crt is met by capillary uh, refill time um, there will be a uh, more than two seconds capillary refill time in severe dehydration. So urine output in uh, less than 3% weight loss of the patient might be normal, uh, diminished or concentrated in clinical dehydration, 5 to 10% weight loss. And there is marked oliguria, which is uh, less uh, urination in severe uh, dehydration. Okay, uh, you can see the, my screen or not? my presentation i mean uh, we cannot see doctor you can see because i'm speaking if i don't know the internet in the hospital are not good at all sometimes inside the same okay so okay. now for for hydration you hear me now i don't know so much time Hello? Uh, doctor, we can't Hello? see your slides. We can hear you, but we can't see your slide currently. You cannot see the slide. You can see my my only. OK, anyone has the, the presentation? Can open it? If anyone has the topic, he can open the slide. No, unfortunately, we don't have the file. But you can send it to us. Mm -hmm. You cannot.
this in, I'm trying to open it again. They said wait for acceptance. Please wait. The meeting host to. Uh, doctor, may I suggest something regarding the slides? You cannot open it. Uh, I think uh, you should send it to our batch email first. Then we'll present it to you. Oh, oh, will you? Okay, Will you now? Ah, uh, will you, doctor? Yeah. So at, at that situation, uh, the most important for you to be uh, systematized. Thank you for your presentation and sorry for the internet problem. Uh, the most important to be systematized. Usually for children, we are getting from up, from head to toe for dehydration, okay? After observation, I said this is your initial one about his alert or restless or drowsy or coma or like that, you will come to, to the anterior fontanelle. When did you suspect the anterior fontanelle will be closed? What is the time of closure of the anterior fontanelle? Six months. Sorry? Uh, six months. Uh, who can increase? <laughs> oh. Uh, unless you said from six months to 18 months. Okay. So still until 18 months and some kids may be presented with delayed closure uh, approaching two years. So it is very important to comment about the arterial fontanel. Why? Because with dehydration, the arterial fontanel will be sunken. But if there is infection inside the brain, like meningitis or like that, you will find the anterior fontanel is bulging. So it is very important, okay? And then you will come to the eye to say is it sunken or not, but the most important also to say is it tearing or not? Because of the child tearing, uh, crying without tearing, it means they have no enough water in his body. And go ahead as your colleague already presented. Okay, the second slide or the next one. Okay, so here also this is to define the same criteria, but you need to, according to the degree of dehydration, you will define is it mild or moderate or severe. Uh, usually, if the child became a bit elder, more than five years or like that, we can try three, seven. 10, okay? Uh, I mean the up to three and then up to seven and then up to 10. The, the most important thing is the uh, weight of the child. So you must check how the weight loss, because weight loss, it is needed for many things, including the, the degree of dehydration, okay? Uh, included here is the vital sign. You can see the pulse rate, the perfusion, the blood pressure. All these are a vital sign. Remember that our vital signs are vital. Don't miss it. It can, it, it can guide you if the patient has air with you. Okay, next one. This one, I will test all of you soon on it, please. How to assist dehydration in small baby or even in toddler or on other. It is very practical one, starting from the anterior fontanelle, go for the eye, go for the mouse. Even you can come for the jugular venous pulse. You can check for the uh, tachypnea, all vital signs which will guide you for capillary, for skin pinching, for decrease urine output. Why I'm insisting for that? Because of the patient has severe dehydration, he can progress to shock. And shock has two times. The first one is compensated shock. And the other one is decompensated. I mean by compensated, still the body mechanisms tries, try to settle the situation. 
Okay, so still the blood pressure is uh, supported. Usually you will find here the diastole may be slightly high and the systole is still normal. After that, decompensated, it will be the blood pressure start to also to drop and the pulse rate will be increasing, will be shooting. At the time, it may be uncompensated or another expression, irreversible shock. And it can either end by death or abnormal coagulation or acute kidney injury. So high mortality and the morbidity of gastroenteritis are, are coming from underestimation of the degree of dehydration. Am I clear? Yes, doctor. Okay, next slide, please. So we speak before, we did a long history and then we did professional clinical examination and then now we are coming for the investigation which only represent a small portion, less than 10%. Of course, uh, hemo, uh, full blood count are very important and you must have the art how to interpret the full blood count. Okay, I think uh, you need to, one of you, one or two of you can, in, can write how to interpret the full blood count and the peripheral blood film, one for full blood and the one for the peripheral blood film, okay? Uh, and they present it to the group, it is very important. Because if the hemoglobin is low, it may denote the child has anemia, it may be anemia of chronic disease. If hematocrit is high, it may be going with like dengue fever or dehydration. Why it count it, it will guide you for the infection, is it viral or bacterial? So everyone has its job. At the same time, there is some cases, if you go through the blood film like hemolytic uremic syndrome, it can also accompanied by abnormality in the blood film, you must go through it. Of course, you mustn't forget the renal profile because the most sensitive organ for the dehydration is the kidney. And at that situation, we can put what is known as AKI. If you didn't intervene, because it's pre-renal, it will go for renal cause. And if it go for renal cause, it may be ended by severe deterioration. So take care, please. Uh, urea and creatinine also, which is a kidney function test. Electrolyte imbalance. Why electrolyte imbalance occur with the uh, with diarrhea? For many causes, we are losing with the vomiting and the diarrhea a lot of salts, which the body cannot compensate. At the same time, some families are compensated for the thirsty sensation of the child by a lot of water, which means that water doesn't contain any, any electrolytes or significant electrolytes, so it will be stirred. So it is very important and the most, the most important one is the serum sodium. Serum sodium, it will help you to define is it hypotonic or iso or hypertonic dehydration. Of course, potassium because hypokalemia can cause paralytic also alias. Culture sensitivity, blood gas. Blood gas is very important if the patient is in shock will guide you about the metabolic acidosis. Next. The stool investigation, of course, you if, uh, stool for microscopic examination uh, to check if there any infection, is there any infestation. You may need to do culture if you suspected dysentery or severe dehydration. It may be bacterial if the patient to look chronically ill or immune deficient or toxemic, all this. The stool BH can guide you for reducing substance with lactate intolerance, okay? Uh, sometimes we need to collect stool for three days if we suspect it is 
a big amount of fat like that in case of cystic fibrosis, it can help. Okay. Uh, colonoscopy can be used in some cases if we suspect inflammatory bowel disease, okay, or uh, severe uh, ulceration in the gut. Of course, if we suspect systemic disease like UTI, we will do UFMBE. If we suspect it is dengue, we are going to do dengue test like that, okay? So it depends if it is the enteral one, if you suspect it is pneumonia, you can do chest X-ray. So it depends on the parenteral diarrhea. Next. So the treatment of acute diarrhea, if you are very professional and working in it will be ORS. RS is the top importance because it contains both of fluid and electrolytes. And we have before uh, ORS, the WHO and the revised one, and we have our own. So it is very important. Besides diet, besides zinc, if the patient has infected the area, he may need antimicrobial like CBN or like that, and the others. Okay, next. This is the important of ORS, you must know all details about that. Okay, as 2% glucose, 50 to 90 milli equivalent of sodium. Okay, after preparation, you must know how is the component of the ORS, which is WHO reduced osmolarity or the standard one. We have two, usually we are using the uh, reduce the osmolarity nowadays, okay? Second. If the fluid is not recommended, we can go for, okay, simple fluid, Okay, but we are not allowed to give a uh, sport drink or simple sugar, sugar or glucose solution or carbohydrate soft drink because all this will disturb the composition of the body electrolyte. And as you know, electrolyte disturbance, sometimes it can cause a lot of complications like hyponatremia, can cause convulsion, hypokalemia, can cause paralysis and paralytic areas. So, and the cardiac arrhythmia, so it is very dangerous. Okay. And next one. So, this is our management who can present this table, please. Let us choose. Phase. Uh, excuse me, sorry that I just came for the toilet. Okay. Uh, so you can tell us the management slide. Excuse me, Dr. Pardon, can you, uh, what is the question again? Present uh, this, this slide, Phase. Oh, okay. So for the measurement of dehydration, it can be treatment due via how severe the dehydration is. Where there is no, there's no dehydration, there's some dehydration or severe dehydration. So you can look based on the any of these four parameters, which is in, in general condition, where the patient is well, alert, there's no sunken eye, and the children drink normally, and the skin goes back immediately. So hence for this patient, there's no dehydration, hence we proceed with plan A. For some dehydration, so the, uh, the patient has restlessness, irritability, with presence of sunken eye, and drinks eagerly or thirsty. And based on if we pinch the skin or the abdomen, 
the skin goes back slowly. And therefore, we proceed with plan B. However, in severe dehydration, uh, the patient is let shows lethargic and loss of and or even loss of consciousness, and also the presence sunken eye. And when we offer the children fluid, he does not he does not able to drink it or drink poorly. And when we pinch the skin or abdomen, the skin goes back very slowly, more than two seconds. And therefore, we proceed with plan C. Uh, doctor, I'm sorry to interrupt, but so, there's one person who can. Oh, okay, lah. Sorry. No, there's one person who cannot enter uh, the Zoom right now, but now she can. She can now? Ah, uh, yes, doctor. She can already enter the Zoom. Okay, next. So let us see what is plan A, plan C, plan. Okay, for, for the management, we have the assessment of the child. What is the ABC? Airway, breathing, circulation. Can you increase the, your voice, please? Airway, Airway. breathing, Airway, breathing. Okay. okay. So, and uh, is there any shock or not? What is the sign of shock you are looking for? Reduced capillary refill time. Okay. What else? Uh, reduced peripheral pulses. It is for you. Okay. What else? Tachycardia. Okay. Increase, increase heart. Okay. Tachypnic. Tachypnic. And uh, what is the most important the last step we just spoke about? Is there blood pressure? Okay, so the blood pressure is the top important. Okay, and you must know that the blood pressure will not fall the uh, straight forward. It first the body is trying to compensate, so it's trying to increase the diastole. You cannot increase the systole, and after that, both will fall. So your uh, your responsibility is to be it very very early. Then resuscitation, mainly to treat the dehydration and uh, you must be able to define how is the degree of dehydration from the table which you spoke about okay uh, we need to give extra fluids okay uh, stop diarrhea and continue feeding if the patient is tolerate in the first group and the advice when return to the hospital so this one will be the patient with plan a who has no uh, severe dehydration and he can tolerate oral fluids like that, okay? But even if you are going to discharge, you must counsel the family, he must come back and become sick, sicker, or he has got fever, or he has blood in the stool, or he stopped eating, all this must be put in your concentration. And sometimes you must be able to consider the social situation, I mean, if this patient is orang asli and they are afraid, even if he has mild dehydration, so we are trying to hydrate him either in the emergency department for some time to make sure they can understand or not. Because in our medicine, we have sometimes things is known as social, social admission. They be afraid, they are far away from any service. They may go and they cannot come back for financial or difficulty in transportation like that, okay? Next one. So plan B is try a treatment with the ORS. As I told you, the ORS is very, very important. Okay. And 
and we have to standard one and the new one of the WHO, which are working very effective. And this one, which prevented this, even in some situation, if the family cannot find ORS, sometimes you are asking them just to go for adding one spoon of big sugar and a half spoon of salt over one liter of water, it will compensate for the electrolyte loss. But of course, we are able to stand up. Uh, we are giving it about 50 to 75 ml per kilo. Okay, uh, it is very important. Uh, ORS uh, over four hour period, you must check the weight and how much you are giving, going to give him. Okay, and then reassess after four hours uh, what is going is continue with the approved plan or give extra fluid and continue feeding and they went to return. So you must keep him under your observation for some time until you feel the stop pumping. You can drink enough amount so you can play for charge, but also with family counseling. Okay, the plan C. Okay, indication for intravenous. When I'm going to do intravenous, if there is severe dehydration or the child look drowsiness or unconscious, if uh, uh, rabbit stool loss with no appetite or he cannot drink with frequent severe vomiting and the poor drinking abdominal distension. Abdominal distension here sometimes may indicate there is a hypokalemia. Okay. Hypokalemia, which you can cause like uh, paralysis, okay? Uh, and the glucosal absorption. So it is very important to consider as uh, this situation the use of IV fluids and don't uh, underestimate uh, the need because it is very, very important. Next slide. So Valencia, very important. We have to be like bolus of IV fluid, which is twenty ml per kilo. It's very important. Okay. As a printer lactate or saline, after every bolus, you may need to repeat it. Okay. Uh, and the, then you are going to calculate the flow deficit. Okay. Can you read me now? We can hear you, but uh, it's not that clear no, no, and it's a bit echoish. I understood the other one. Okay, just a while.
sorry can you hear me or not yes yes doctor okay so for plan c we must combine the fluid deficit and the maintenance can we go for the next slide please okay so now let us give an example okay the amount of fluid needed the fluid deficit it will be 100 percent of the uh, body weight okay the maintenance if less than six months he needs 150 ml per kilo per day from six months to one year we need 120 more than one year it will be uh, 100 for the first 10 kilos and then 120 okay for the second 10 kilos you will are you are going to give 50 ml per kilo so the first 10 kilos you will give 100 the second 10 kilos from 10 to 20 you are giving to give 50 after that it is 20 ml for that let us give an example if you have a child now his weight is 25 kilos how can i calculate the maintenance mm. 170 ml <laughs> first thing will be So it is better to say the first 10 kilo, it will be 1,000. The second 10 kilo, it will be 500. Then the remaining 5 kilo multiply by 20. So it will be more 100. So the total is 1,700. OK? So it is very, very important. OK? Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so here gastroenteritis is an acute self-limited illness, but it needs support. We cannot leave it without support. Diarrhea and vomiting in infancy and the childhood is usually due to viral. So the most common cause is the viral gastroenteritis. What is the most common virus? Is the rotavirus. Okay, rotavirus is the most uh, common one. That's why we have vaccination for the rotavirus, known as Rotarix, okay? It will give in orally. It is an extra vaccine, but it is very effective, given from the infant from six weeks until maximum six uh, months, as a two doses with one month apart. Is very effective in preventing diarrhea completely or decrease its severity so it will decrease the uh, hospital admission. Breastfeeding is a very important, we cannot stop it because it, it helps. Antibiotics and the and, and the anti emetics are contraindicated unless there is severe indication. Next one. Okay, I will try to present from my side here. You are only 33 candidates now? It is the, can you see the screen now? Is it clear? Not yet, not yet. Not yet? I'm trying to present one OSCE. It is not clear? 
Uh, we cannot see any slide document. Not clear also? Um, no. It's not there. We cannot see uh, any not slides. There. Let me start the screen. And we can... Oh, no. Can you see the screen now or not? Yes, we can not there, but not the slide. Yes, the, the slide now is not clear. I don't know why, like this. Okay, let us go down. Okay. You can see this one, okay? But you cannot see the other. You can see these slides? Yes, we can, Doctor. So why, why we cannot see? I just, uh, okay, I will send you just uh, in the group one of the, your colleagues, because I used the for these cases of gastroenteritis, we, we need to practice it a lot. So I will uh, offer you insult, inshallah in the group, uh, just one example of gastroenteritis. How can we go for complete details about the history, clinical examination and uh, uh, investigation and how we can come to the final conclusion about the diagnosis. It is not just EGE, is it bacterial or viral? What about the dehydration? As you know, the most dangerous part of the issue is the uh, dehydration, which can kill the patient. Is there any complication? Is it enteral or parenteral? Uh, all this, and there is some quiz how to, how we can calculate the amount of fluid deficit, okay, and how we can calculate the maintenance and how we can formulate the dosing of the IV fluids. Okay, all these are very, very important because you are not allowed to underestimate the fluid or even given over fluid because over fluid also is not recommended. Many patients are improving and start to eat and the, the treating one doesn't notice and he continue giving fluid. So you will find the patient to go fluid overload and the puffiness of his uh, eyelid like that. So it is very important to take care about that, okay? Uh, that is the most important point. Uh, and by that, we can uh, understand what is the meaning of the diarrhea can be behind a lot of, of problem, okay? For the children, which can be ended by even death. Still, until now, you cannot see the slides? You can see it now. Uh, this one, the black one? Ah, yes, the OSCE. Okay, good. So it is the, it is the same knowledge about uh, your colleague before trying to, to ask about the hydration status, how we can say if it uh, mild or moderate or severe or less than three or between five and 10 or severe, you just present it, okay? But you must, as I told you, you must go systematize from general observation and the general appearance, and then start by the anterior fontanelle and the eye and mouth and mucous membrane and vital signs, okay, including cavity refill time, skin turgidity, and the urine output. And at the last, you must go from the upward, the one which is the weight, okay. Uh, then this is the oral rehydration salt, ORS. Uh, it is very important to know the composition and how we can dilute it uh, because uh, it, it is calculated according to the chassis. It can be put in one liter or a small amount like that. Okay. Uh, it must be mixed according to the amount of the 
sterile water pre-boiled pre or maybe sterile one, okay, you must give small sips. The baby usually he is very thirsty. If you give him one cup, he will drink it, but he will vomit it directly because it is very bad taste. Even I prefer to go put in the fridge to be slightly cold. Okay, if it's vomiting, wait for 10 minutes. So the issue is to give him in very small sips. It will be even absorbed from the mouse. Don't give, I need to give this child 70 ml per kilo. So it's like five kilo or need to give 50 by five, 250. So I will give it very slowly. Okay, don't push, otherwise you will vomit it. Here is the intravenous uh, fluid example. Uh, if someone, one of you can present this slide, it is a good one. Should I choose? Anyone can present this one? Uh, Slide. I will try that one. Okay. So intravenous fluid management in pediatric age group. Uh, first, the uh, resuscitation. So in shock where there is circulatory collapse, um, we need to use uh, bolus uh, saline, which is 0.9% normal saline. Um, and then uh, monitor, and then after that, we need to monitor the clinical signs uh, of shock where the, whether there is an improvement or not. And then for replacement, um, for dehydration, we need to give continuous IV infusion over um, uh, okay, the continuous continuous IV infusion over for four to six hours. Uh, and then the type of fluid is uh, normal saline or Hartman's solution. Uh, and then uh, after that, we need to monitor the clinical signs of dehydration every four to six hours. For ongoing loss um, of fluid, we need to give continuous IV infusion hourly or four hourly of normal saline of, uh, or Hartman's solution. And then we need to monitor the uh, fluid output for maintenance. Um, if there is uh, in a inability for oral feeding, we need to give continuous IV infusion over 24 hours of normal cell line plus 5% glucose. Mm. And then we need to monitor the patient every 24 hours for clinic for clinical evaluation of dehydration, uh, I, I, the picture is not really clear, so uh, I can't. Important. Okay, holiday and the cigar, I'm not clear. Yeah, uh, I can read the one. Holiday and cigar for me. Yes. Uh, I cannot read it now. Okay, can you read it now? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, but I cannot read the orange box because it's too small. Uh, I can yes. read the example. Uh, can okay. you read? Can you just tell us the example. Yes, it is very important. Okay. okay. The the example. Um. Uh. 
seven years old boy, 22 kilogram, brought to emergency department with two days history of diarrhea and vomiting. So first we need to assess for clinical signs of shock and then take blood sample for uh, investigation for full blood count and um, RP. I'm not sure what RP. Uh, okay, and then? Renal profile. Uh, renal profile, okay, sorry doctor. Okay, so if the patient is in shock, then, um, we need to give uh, intravenous fluid uh, resuscitation, bolus, um, IV, normal cell line, um, which is 440 ml, and then repeat bolus dose until no longer until the patient is no longer in shock. Uh, and then we need to assess degree of dehydration based on clinical signs. And then after that, we need to calculate the fluid uh, deficit. Mm, uh, so for dehydration, uh, that is the uh, the formula. Mm, uh, if uh, there is dehydration, it's going to be 366 mil per hour for uh, ongoing loss. Mm, it's going to be 25 milliliter per hour. To calculate fluid maintenance, um, yeah, this this is the formula, and then uh, for total uh, IV fluid uh, given per hour, it is four hundred and fifty five milliliter per hour. That is for if the patient is in shock, but if the patient is not in shock then we need to assess the degree of dehydration based on clinical signs. If there is uh, lower than 5% dehydration, uh, we need to continue uh, I can't really see. Continue feeding as usual and give extra fluid. And give extra fluid. Um, for 5% dehydration, we need to give uh, ORS uh, over over four hours. Um, and then uh, reassess after four hours. Uh, reassess the patient after four hours. For ten percent dehydration, we need to um do a similar management as in shock, which is assess degree of uh dehydration just now. Okay. Uh, okay, I feel now uh, you can come to the conclusion the importance of the adjusting the IV fluid is your uh, responsibility. Okay, you must know the holiday and cigar how to calculate the IV fluid and how to calculate the maintenance and the deficit. Okay, and when to admit it, it's the same which you present. And here is the maintenance, okay, which you spoke about before. Uh, this is uh, very clear. The first 10 kilos, you need 100. Some put it in like in 4 ml per kilo, and then the next 10 will be 2 ml per kilo, and the third one will be 1. But you must know both of them, okay. Uh, so it is the same if you have maybe like 12 kilogram with severe dehydration 100 percent okay due to gastroenteritis so the initial fluid resuscitation you give him bolus of 120 ml of normal saline okay the fluid deficit it will be 10 percent which is about 1200 okay and the daily requirement of the fluids it is also will be looks the same, which is uh, 100, uh, uh, 110, uh, 1,100, OK? We give in, calculate over, and give in over 24 hours. Is it clear? Yeah. 
Yes, Doctor. Okay. Uh, it's good. Thank you for uh, your uh, attendance. How many candidates absent today? Is it one or no? Now you are 35 only candidates. How much is your group? Uh, the total is 36, but one of the one of us is sick, so he did not attend. He didn't attend from the start. Yeah. Salamat. What she has? He 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 said that he's uh, not well. Mm -hmm. So she must inform uh, our science officer Farah. Okay, about your attendance, please. Okay. Because it is not allowed for anyone to absent. Uh, specifically, we have the internet in everywhere. Unless she has a problem with the internet, we can uh, help for that. Okay. Thank you. Now it's uh, your turn to ask any question if you need. Doctor, can I ask a question? Uh, why in uh, severe dehydration, the child refused to drink water? Not refuse. Not refuse. We didn't, uh, we didn't advise to drink plain water because, as I told you, plain water will uh, give him only water. But what he is losing during vomiting and the diarrhea, if you go for the composition of the stool and the vomiting, you will find it a lot of all electrolytes. So if you are treating, I am losing now water and the electrolytes and they give me water only, what will happen for my electrolytes? Diluted. Diluted. You know that potassium is very diluted, it can cause paralytic alias. Sodium, if diluted, can cause convulsion. Other can cause arrhythmia. So it's very dangerous. So we mustn't keep on plain fluid. That's why we are speaking about the ORS of the WHO. Or if we have our own choice inside Malaysia, we must use fluids and electrolytes. Okay? Even in a very remote area, you can find, as I told you, just bring one liter and put a big scope or big spoon of sugar and a half a spoon of uh, salt, it will act. Uh, are you speaking in terms of management? No, I, I'm answering your question. We aren't referring to give the fluid plain water. If he okay. said either give him the breast milk or give him ORS. Oh, because I'm uh, I'm referring to the hydration status table that you showed us just now. Mm -hmm. uh, wait. Um. So in uh, severe hydration status, it's stated that uh, the child is thirst and refuse to feed. So I wonder why. Oh, no, no, it, it is a, a severity of the disease. In spite, he, he needs and he is thirsty, but he is very tired or going for shock. So even he will refuse because of oh. severity of the disease. Oh, I see. I okay. was speaking from the patient perspective. Yes, but I'm answering you according to the management perspective. It is not advised to give him billion fluid. But if you find him like that, Despite his uh, thirsty and he refused to food, uh, to drink, it is it is dangerous, and you must go ahead and insert instead of one line, two lines, and try to give him bolus rapidly. Ah, uh, okay, okay, thank you. Okay.